Hey there. I remember you. You're the geographer who was studying spirit climb changes. That's right. And I think that hypothesis I told you about just might be correct. They say the soldiers that came from the flying ships broke through a wall in the sky to get here. Think about that. A wall that surrounds our entire world. That kind of power could easily affect spirit climbs. The schism. The schism? Ooh, I like that name. Okay, let's refer to this wall as the schism. The next problem is, where did the schism come from? The questions never end. But that's why I love science. Yeah. Guess I better do something with Mom's house. And while I'm at it, I should see Isla, too. We should probably tell Prin about Agria. Yeah, it's the least we can do. I hope she's still at the medical school. This is where your mother lived, isn't it? Yeah. You're back? Hey, Isla. I got your letter, so... Mom's dead. You already buried her? That... that's right. I'm so sorry. When I got here, she had already departed. Mom... Why did you do this? I'm sorry. I'm okay. There's actually a part of me that's kind of relieved now. Gonna scold me for that? A human life is a heavy thing. If you were carrying your mother's burden for her, it's only natural that you'd feel that way. <laughs> Never thought you'd be the one to console me. All right, enough of this. Isla, how did she really die? What? If you mean the cause of death, it was a sudden paroxysm of... You don't think it was the poison? Because my mother knew that you were mixing it into her food. What? Remember how she'd have those lucid moments? She told me about the poison in a letter. She lied. If she knew about it, why did she eat? Don't strain yourself. You never were a good liar. It's... it's you and that group of yours' fault for trapping me here! Wait, stop! Isla went to the Royal Hunting Grounds! Damn it! After her! I wonder what Drisella's doing now. She's probably busy missing you! I do hope the loss of Lord Klein hasn't been too hard on her. Why did you poison Alvin's mother? <sighs> because she was holding her back. So long as Mom was alive, Isla could never get her happy ending. Exactly. I don't want anything more to do with Exodus. All I want to do is live a normal, happy life. I worked so hard just to be able to do that. Did my mother suffer? Good. That's the one thing I was worried about. You're going to let her go? She killed your mother! Mom knew she wasn't long for this world. She told me so in her last letter. She asked me to set Isla free after she died. She knew? And she still... Yep. Even though it meant she'd never return to the home she loved so much. I don't believe you. You're just going to blackmail me again. I have to destroy all the evidence. I have to erase my former self. Or else I'll never be truly happy. Wait, Isla, stop. Uh, ah! Isla!
How is she doing? Thanks to your first aid, her injuries have healed up nicely. But... Mommy... Why aren't you leaving me? Please don't sell me. I promise I won't complain about being hungry. Please! Mommy! How could this happen? Don't worry, Isla. I'm here. I'll always be here for you, whether you get better or not. Isla is lucky to have you. But it's so sad. Are you sure it's okay for us to stay here? I don't mind. She'll be safe here. They don't know about this place, but I'm taking the gun belt with me. It's been in my family for a long time. I promised my mom I'd take it home with me. Then I hope you find your way back home. It's the least I can do for her. She was a great mom. Um... What is it? Do you think we could go back to the Booster Research Lab? You mean go back to Labari Hollow? Why would you want to go there? Oh, of course! If that's where you grew up, you might remember something about your past! I'm sorry. I know we don't have much time. No trouble at all! Besides, maybe you'll remember something that inspires you to new heights! That's certainly a possibility. Let's try to get back to Labari Hollow. <sighs> What's up? Coming back to Fenmont like this makes me miss my old medical school. Then why not drop by? You don't mind? Nah. You must have really loved it there if you miss it this much. I guess becoming a doctor really is your calling. I wonder what school's like. I bet you want to go to school too, huh? Don't worry. As soon as we find a nice, safe place for you to live, you can start going. I don't want to go. Oh? May I ask why? Because if I bring Chipo to school, won't they get mad at me? You needn't worry about that. I'll ask them to let Tipo go, too. I can go, too? Sure. Leia used to take dogs and cats to school with her. Then I do want to go. Why didn't you tell us sooner? I hope we'll be able to send Elise to school soon. Indeed. And I'd like to see you continue your education as well. Mark my words, Jude. One of these days, life will return to normal. Yeah, I guess it will. Prin, I'm glad to see you're still here. By all rights, I shouldn't be. Not after I betrayed Rashigal to its enemy. But with the world as it is now, we're getting scores of injured patients every day. At the very least, I wanted to fulfill my obligations as a nurse. That is truly admirable. Fortunately, conflicts between the nations of Riza Maxia are the last thing on anyone's mind now. Yeah, especially now that Gaius is running Rashigal too. Yes, I talked to King Gaius myself recently. He told me that Miss Nadia was dead. So you knew? Yes. He was kind enough to tell me personally. I was shocked that he even knew I was Lady Nadia's lowly servant. That is most impressive. I'm sorry, Prin. I wish we could have done more to save her. You don't need to say that. To be honest, it was painful seeing Miss Nadia filled with such contempt. I know this may sound horrible for me to say this, but part of me is glad to know she's finally freed from her hatred, even if it's through death. I've seen her truly smile when she held Bobo. Seeing that made her usual misery all the harder to bear. Prin, I'm sorry. It's never easy, is it? Mr. Eldon? Dr. Jude! Hey, good news! You're in the clear now! Between Gillen's betrayal and the Exodus situation, no one cares about your charges anymore. When everything calms down, they may want you to come in and answer some questions, but it won't be a big deal. But there are still wanted posters everywhere! Yeah, I'm sorry about that. We haven't had time to take them down yet. Well, that's still great news. Right, Jude? Yeah. I've been meaning to ask you, Doc. What happened to that tall guy who was with you before? You know, the one who knocked me down on the pier. You mean Alvin? He's... well... Ah, I knew that had to be Alvin. You know him? Not personally, but my wife and I used to be close to the woman he lived with. Her name was Mink. Mink? 
She's a real beauty. She wears glasses and always carries a book around. You don't know her? Hmm? Do you mean Pressa? Uh, maybe. I'm sure Mink wasn't her real name. That's why I wanted to talk to Alvin, you see. To make sure he knew her real identity. What do you mean? We received some intel that said she was actually a spy. One of the rats. What's that? They're spies from one of the Ajul clans. Exactly. Mink made friends with a lot of Rashigal nobles and military officers and pumped them for secrets. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for my appointment. What should we do? I don't know. If it's something Pressa didn't want him to know, then I don't think we should tell him. I mean, if even Alvin couldn't figure it out, she must have really wanted that secret kept. You sure you don't need to stop by Niakara for anything? Actually, it has been a while since I've shown my face around town. I wouldn't mind seeing how everyone's doing. Well, when we have a chance, let's make the trip. We've got an early start tomorrow. Be sure to get some rest. Will do. But man, this constant Fenmont night is really messing up my rhythm. Come to think of it, I had trouble adjusting to it too. The trick is to always eat meals at the same times you used to. Okay, I'll give that a try. And I'll be your alarm clock if you can't get up in time. All right, but don't get mad if I bump you on the head when I want to go back to sleep. Good night. Good night. I could use a good night's sleep, too. I'm beat. I need a good night's sleep. Tell me, Jude. Do you know what the greatest challenge is for a soldier on the battlefield? Uh, fighting, I guess? No. In fact, it's getting enough sleep surprisingly difficult. You don't know when the enemy will attack. You don't know if you'll still be alive tomorrow. Sleeping amidst worries like that is a challenge for even the most experienced of soldiers. So what do you do when you're in that situation? Take a deep breath, relax, and look all around. See that your friends and companions are there. Friends that keep watch while you rest. Friends that risk their lives in battle together and friends that suffer from the same fears as you. Right. There are few things more reassuring than knowing that others share the same fears. But maybe I only feel that way because I'm a bitter, selfish old man. <sighs> that makes two of us. <laughs> it's good to know we share such an odd common ground. I've been away for quite some time. Has anything significant happened here? Lord Maxwell, you've returned. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Ivor around lately. Do you know where he might be? Ivor? He must have run off somewhere without my permission again. That's probably because of me. Sorry about that. Hmm. I see. But I don't think that's something for you to apologize for. Indeed. It was the result of a showdown that needed to take place. Thank you. There's one more thing, Lord Maxwell. One of the young folk found this at the base of the Hollermont. It's a letter addressed to someone named Al. Al? That would be me. No one saw who might have left it? No, there was no sign of anyone at all. Go ahead. It sounds like it's for your eyes only. Dear, Dear Al. Al. I, I never, never expected, expected that, that you would return, return to, to me. me. As someone who has endured betrayal her whole life, to have my expectations betrayed so sweetly was, for once, a great kindness. But if you're reading this letter now, it means that in choosing to live my life as Pressa, 
I have chosen to betray you. I am truly sorry. Pressa. Alvin! Let's go. Pressa's team was wiped out because of information I acquired by deceiving her. And yet, the last thing she said was that she was worried about me. Me. The guy who cost her everything. Somehow she knew I would go back to you all. I can't believe it. You can stay here for as long as you need. But come back when you're ready. We'll wait for you. I'm going to keep at it. I'll protect all that you've given me. Goodbye, Jill. That was always my favorite name, you know. Pop quiz! How many people do you think live in one of those giant houses in Triglav? Have you always liked pop quizzes this much? I've never noticed after all this time. Oh, I know. Did your love of pop quizzes awaken while I was dead? She's always liked pop quizzes. Oh. There was a family of cows beneath the tree at the top of the hill, with one bull and two sows. That's Muse's voice. I thought Muse was with Gaius. We should check inside. No, wait. There's a human in there with her. We need to be careful. When Billy found them, he said, Hey, which one's the wife and which one's the mistress? What kind of story is this? What are you doing? Let's go. Where's Muse? I know she was here. I don't know. Are you friends of hers? Did Muse leave already? Are you okay? You seem a little bit off, Granny. Muse must have gone out the window. Are you better now? Yes, sweetheart. Thank you. Your eyes. I appreciate your concern, dear. Can you see us? I can sense you. I may be blind to light, but I've learned how to see other things. I need to ask you something. I know Muse was here. What was she doing? Before I answer, could you explain to me why you're so interested in her? Well... Mila is Muse's sister. Elise. Let's just make this easy for everyone, okay? Muse's sister? Yes. Very well, since it sounds like you don't mean Muse any harm. I first met her five years ago, when my daughter and I were involved in a terrible accident. Muse happened to be there, and she saved my life. Unfortunately, my daughter was not so lucky. She saved your life? <laughs> she told me she only did it on a whim. But even though I had survived, I had lost my will to live. My beloved daughter, who had read to me every day, was gone. But one day, I asked Muse if she would read to me instead. And she said yes? She did. But I could tell that she hated it at first. Just another of her whims, I suppose. No way! I can't believe it. She is a very kind girl, you know? And a little bit timid, but I suppose that's true of most girls her age. I'm sure you have your reasons for chasing her. I certainly won't try to stop you. But if I may, I'd ask that you please try not to hurt her. Mila? 
I understand how you feel. Good! That's wonderful! Why are you smiling? I'm just relieved to hear that. I imagine you must know lots of embarrassing stories about Alvin. I do. In fact, embarrassing stories might be the only Alvin stories I know. This I gotta hear. Shall I tell you one? One more word and you're dead to me forever. Well now, this is a conundrum. I know. How about a bet? Truly, an Olympian's answer to everything. Now, now, Alfred, you know better than that. Gambling is a long and proud Olympian tradition. It has some bad points, but it has good ones, too. Would we be betting money? Certainly not. We can choose to bet anything we like. For example... We could bet on whether or not you can find a light leaf clover. If you can, you win. And I'll air out some of Alfred's dirty laundry. What's a light leaf clover? It's a clover with golden leaves that grows on the sides of roads. Olympians consider it a good luck charm. I've heard they once grew along Rasal High Road. Then this should be a piece of cake. You got yourself a bet, buddy. So betting is a hollowed Olympian tradition? I'm a little intrigued myself. Okay, let's go check out Rusal High Road. Hey, wait a minute. It's been ages since a lightleaf clover was seen on the high road. And some say they might be extinct. Alfred, are you really going to waste my magnanimity? This is why I hate gambling. Sounds like our best chance to find a light leaf clover is on the Rusal High Road. It's a clover with sun colored leaves, right? Let the hunt begin! Is this a light leaf clover? Yeah, that's it. Damn it, Balin told me these things were extinct. Extinct? You thought they were extinct and let us bet anyway? No, I just... well... yeah, basically. Well, all's well that ends well. It's a miracle! We've traveled to an entirely different world, and this is what qualifies as a miracle to you? Damn, I thought we got them all, but it looks like we missed one. You there! Hand over that clover if you know what's good for you. Huh? Who the heck are you? We found this fair and square. If anyone else finds a clover, we lose our bet. If you won't hand it over, we'll take it by force. just attack us like that and what did they mean about a bet wait a minute do you know something best not to talk out here let's go back to Balin's yes now we get to hear an embarrassing story about Alvin this is why I hate gambling let's bring the light leaf clover back to Balin and then we get our story this is gonna be good Holy, I can't believe you actually found a light leaf clover. If we'd have bet money, you'd have made a killing. All right, make with the embarrassing stories. Oh well, a bet's a bet. <sighs> Which one are you going to tell them? Let's make it the one about this very clover. When Alvin was five years old, he wanted to do something for Aunt Leticia's, for his mother's birthday. He came up with the idea of giving her a crown made entirely out of light leaf clovers. Sounds like that could be difficult. Right. Even back then, they were quite hard to find. So little Alvin thought long and hard about what to do. After a lot of thought, he came up with the idea of painting regular clovers the color of light leaf clovers. That's brilliant! Is it? He gave it to Leticia before the paint was dry, and she ended up getting it all over her hair. Alvin was even more surprised at this than Leticia was, and he started bawling his eyes out. Out of habit, he buried his face in her hair as he tried to apologize and ended up getting paint all over his face, too. The end. <laughs> That's so cute! 
That was a wonderful story. You really loved your mother, didn't you, Alvin? I'll get you for this, Balin. <laughs> oh, talking about Leticia has put me in the mood for one of her peach pies. Oh, they were absolute perfection. I'd give anything for one more bite, but unfortunately, it's not to be. Balin, you hang on to those memories. She may never have made it back to Olympias, but at least we can keep her memory alive. Even if you asked me to, I could never forget about her, or about you, naturally. I'm glad I made it back. Remember that naturalist who was researching changes in spirit climbs? Ah, yes. Perhaps he's completed his research. Yeah, we should go visit him back at the Central Plaza. Ah, uh, hello there. I've got the results of the examination data. So the art we used at Bermia Gorge came in handy, huh? Oh, yes. Now, after reviewing all of the data, I have determined that there is a clear link between spirit art usage and nearby spirit climb changes. As the scale of spirit art usage grows, the changes in the climb become more pronounced. So the recent topographical changes in Bermia Gorge are due to the increased spirit art usage in Sheraton. That's right. I saw the same kind of data with Fenmont's expanding night climb as well. At our current usage scale, we should only see minor alterations. But if we keep developing new spirit arts, we may be facing irreversible changes to our spirit climbs. Like the whole world going dark? That is a remote possibility, yes. So even if we stay inside the schism, there's a chance that Reza Maxia could end up just like Olympias. I guess even spirit arts have their drawbacks. It all depends on how we use them. If all we seek from spirit arts or spyrex is to maximize convenience, then of course we'll see repercussions. I agree. But at least this news comes at the right time. Yeah, if we open the schism and reshape the world, surely human awareness will be reshaped as well. The question, of course, is in what way? But nothing will change at all if we don't act. You're right. For better or worse, this is the path we've chosen. Looks delicious. Leia's dad makes the best Mabo curry anywhere. You always did love dad's Mabo curry, huh? <laughs> that doesn't mean I could eat it every day, though. What do you mean? Leia would always bring Mabo curry over after a fight. Ah, so it was an excuse to make up. Yeah. My parents were always busy and didn't have much time to cook, so it really helped us out. And because Leia and I used to fight all the time... You ended up having Mabo curry every day. Didn't you think to bring over anything else? Sure, but Mabo curry is special because it's two kinds of food in one. Just like two good friends getting along. So it was an edible symbol of friendship. And it kind of worked. From then on, I did my best not to let Leia get me angry. That way I wouldn't have to eat Mabo curry every night. Hey, that makes it sound like it was always my fault we fought. It wasn't always your fault. I'd say around 80%. <laughs> no, no. You two settle down. Enjoy some Mabo curry together. Mm. <laughs> I could certainly eat. Then why not come to my house? I'm sure my dad's cooked up something. That roast chicken looks amazing. Just looking at it is making me salivate. Sorry, Mila, but you can't have any. I'm sure it's for someone's birthday. How can you tell? Here on the island, it's a tradition to celebrate one's birthday with our special chicken Laurent. The chicken is stuffed with pilaf, which mixes with the chicken's juices, and it's just delicious. Oh, I'm drowning in my own saliva just thinking about it. It must be a very special dish to the people of Laurent. Then you must have eaten this on your birthdays as well. Yeah. A long time ago. Not recently? Well, lately I've been living in Fenmont. And before that, Leia would try to deliver it to me. But she tripped and dropped it for three years straight. 
Three years straight. What a waste. I it wasn't on purpose. It's just the more I tried to be careful not to trip, the more I ended up tripping. <laughs> that does sound like something Leia would do. I'm really sorry. I only tried to deliver it because I wanted to see you happy. I know. Every year you were always the person who got the most excited about my birthday. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For my birthday this year, I hope we can all enjoy Chicken Laron together. I'll ask my dad to make it extra good. I greatly look forward to the occasion. As do I. It can't come soon enough.